So I want to move on now to talk specifically about nappy fetishism, often called adult baby syndrome. The acronym BDSM, Bondage, Discipline and Sadomasochism, which was previously called Sadomasochism on its own, has experienced continuous expansion so that it now covers a wide range of men's fetish behavior. What the practice is having in common is the eroticizing of a power hierarchy. Nappy fetishism, though, is relatively new. It does not yet have a fixed name, either in the medical or in the hobbyist literature. It is called variously nappy fetishism, adult baby syndrome, age identity disorder, infantilism, and much more. And it involves adult men choosing to wear nappies and or engage in what they see as the behavior of babies and small children, female babies, of course. This can range from making baby talk to demanding that women change their soiled nappies and wash their bottoms, or it might mean wearing special adult baby clothes. They may choose to do this occasionally or all the time that they are at home or wear, na wear nappies under their regular clothes in public. And this is a typical nappy fetishist. Um, they are, there's a large amount, of course, of erotica online, but this is a perfectly ordinary variety. This would be a very standard man. And there are now, of course, increasingly huge, huge, huge uh, numbers of these men. In the case of nappy fetishism, fetishism, it resembles other forms of men's fetishism in not being a private practice. It's mostly carried out in private homes or in workplaces where women and children are forced to observe or, or take part. Um, some practitioners demand that their wives service their fetish by enabling them to be babies on a permanent basis. And some demand that special nurseries are created in their homes in which their wives can attend to them. At the moment, the wives have been pretty silent about all of this, but they will, of course, come out and speak about it. The practice has been disseminated through the online pornography industry and the hobbyist community of nappy fetishes only in the last decade. Though there are a couple of examples in the sexological literature of cases of this practice from the 1960s, no diagnosis has been deemed necessary in the DSM, that's the Diagnostic and Strategic, uh, Statistical Manual, and it's only in the last decade that an academic interest has developed. An article from 1964 was called An Unusual Perversion, for instance, and another case was recorded in 1965. But the next flurry of interest was in the early 2000s, and this has only become more than a trickle in the last decade. The recent considerable increase in the practice, however, is indicated by specialized online shops and even one bricks and mortar establishment selling equipment such as a plethora of specialized, uh, uh, and there, as well as that, there is a plethora of specialized dating sites and chat rooms on Reddit, for instance. Considering that this fetish behavior is new, it might be surprising to find that it is defended by its practitioners as innate, something that cannot be controlled or changed. But this is being said by those fetishists. Nappy fetishism is very relevant to our struggle against men's practice of woman face, because it is common for men who have one paraphilia to have a number of others. Men who engage in apotemnophilia, for instance, i.e. trying to get a limb or limbs amputated, or who pretend to have a disability by using a wheelchair, are all practiced for their sexual excitements. And they often also engage in the fetish of transvestism. And the most famous exponent is a man who calls himself Chloe Jennings Wright. Let's have a look at Chloe. Here is Chloe Gen Jennings Wright. White. He's a, a mountain climber with transvestite and disability uh, fetishism. I, I'm afraid I do often use him as an example because he is a very good example. Now, another fetishism commonly to be found um, with uh, transvestites is nappy fetishism. As we shall see, nappy fetishists fantasize about being female babies, never males. And in this way, they double up the masochistic rewards by doubling the disadvantage they're acting out, which is both femaleness 
and childhood. So those are both things low in the hierarchy of power. So it's particularly exciting to do both of them together. Now to see what the men get excited by, uh, what it's all about for them, I always look at um, their pornography. And nappy fetishist pornography provides a very useful guide for the motivations and excitements of the men who engage in the practice. Written pornography directed at men who are excited by pretending to be female babies in nappies is well presented, represented on Amazon. I did not watch for my book any of the video pornography in order to write about men's sexual practices because having to watch it would be distressing to me and would constitute my being harmed by men's abusive behavior. Fortunately, there's a great deal of information available from novellas that are promoted online. It's not even usually necessary to read the materials because the titles, excerpts, and illustrations are so informative. It is immediately clear when you look at these that nappy fetishism is a paraphilia which is closely linked to transvestism because the material largely consists of men imitating female children who wear nappies. A sample of titles can give a general overview of the field. Babied by my neighbor, for instance, has graphic descriptions and descriptions of diaper sex, adult baby role play, facials, that's ejaculation on the face, masturbation, oral and rough penetrative sex. That's the description that was on the cover. The action in the, um, in the excerpt, um, can, well, in the book, can, it includes a girl in a nappy who manages to ejaculate like a man. Another title, uh, Becoming His Baby, contains masturbation, forced regression, humiliation, soft diapers, age play, lots of cum, that's what it said on the cover, and concerns a schoolgirl who meets a man on the way back from school and has a secret read nappy under her skirt. Then there's training little Sophie, uh, which concerns transvestite incest pornography. Uh, it, uh, extract says, on the morning of my 18th birthday, I woke to a shock. I was locked inside an adult sized playpen, determined to stay the man of the house's little girl forever. I soon found myself wearing a diaper and acting like an adult baby. I knew it was wrong, but some taboo fantasies are just too tempting to resist. Now, I want to look at the effect of nappy fetishism on women and children. Nappy fetishism, like all of men's other paraphilias, has harmful effects upon women and children. One way in which women are harmed is through sexual harassment by nappy fetishists. Like transvestites, these fetishists are excited by getting reactions from women. They want an audience to witness their behavior in order to gain maximum arousal. And doing their perversion just in their own bedroom or on special weekends away is not as exciting as performing in front of horrified or fearful women in the women's toilets, for instance. We can see um, the nappy fetishes going out onto the streets so that they can get their excitements in the same way as transvestites are able to do. 